What's it like to grow up in a culture of silence, where the defining and often shattering moments of childhood are left unsaid? An environment where the margins of what is acceptable and right are blurred by a collective numbing. And then, like author Pamphilia Tlapa, you take a leap of faith and break the silence, finding your voice through writing and holding the truth up to the light. You decided, Pamphilia, to share your story in a book. I mean, that's quite something. Wow. Yes, a daughter's legacy. A daughter's legacy. I don't have a daughter, but for some reason I had to leave a legacy for all the daughters. And for me, it was saying to myself, what is the best way that I can take what I have been carrying with me for so many years, take it out of my system? And I remembered the pen. I know Kiribone's story. I have seen my friends, my cousins, my sister and my mother endure her pain in silence. Kiribone did not suffer alone. She represents the stories of the boy children and girl children whom society and culture have failed. Well, I was born Kidiboni, Pamphilia Chapa. So, and Kidiboni means I have seen so many things. I was born in Butokwa, and Butokwa is in Limpopo in South Africa. And my parents got divorced while I was still young, so it was just always mummy and us and the rest of the family and the relatives. And my mother was a teacher, but she was deployed to go teach in other areas than the village that we lived in. So I was left with my eldest brother, my sister, and my other brother. So it was a happy start, the early years. I must say, it was a happy, it was a happy beginning. There was never a dull moment. We always had something to do. We were skipping rope, we were playing with um, stones, we were playing with on the trees, we were, would go to the mountains sometimes. And then there was a fundamental turning point when you were in grade one. Our school was far. It must have been a good six kilometers. But you wouldn't know because, I mean, we were not just walking in a, in a deserted area. It was like you, you would walk past other houses. I remember this one day when I was coming back from school. I was in, in sub A, what they call grade one now. That day, I remember that I was alone for some reason because I started at the house next to the school. I played there, and now I wanted to go back home. And I found this guy waiting. I don't think he was waiting for me. It must have been his lucky day that he got me there. Okay, at the time, I don't know that he, he, I didn't know that he was raping me. At the time, I just knew that this guy took hold of me, put me onto the ground, and then he tore my panties, pushed up my school uniform, and then he started doing what he had to do. I did scream because I remember that, like even now as I'm speaking, I remember how I screamed that my voice couldn't come out anymore. And that's when I decided to just give in and be quiet. When I think about it now, it was a defining moment. It feels like now when I think about that he planted something in me that I had to carry with me for the rest of my life. Pamphilia told no one about the rape, not her mother and not even her close friends. She instinctively knew that she should keep it a secret. And so there was no one to help her make sense of her shattered world. So why didn't you tell anyone? What do I say to people? I don't know what has happened to me. Kids get beaten up when they do things wrong. I probably was being punished for walking alone, which is a wrong thing. So for me, it was more of a punishment for what I had done myself. No one has ever told me that if someone touches you in a way that makes you uncomfortable, you should talk. Like, what would I say to my mother when I got home? She wasn't even there. The community, the society that we grew up in, it has been ruthless towards women and girls, such that when you are wronged, the moment you speak up, you get blamed, not, not, not the perpetrator. For those girls that I know, the, the first thing they thought of was to keep it quiet. 
because everybody they're going to be the laughing stock of the community for being raped. Why do you think the women in rural areas don't talk about these things? Because in our village we had a chief and the chief is a man. We had what I call a crawl, where the village matters would be discussed. And every time, it was a man sting. Remember in those parts of the world, the serious issues that you look at when you're there is poverty. Your body being touched is nothing compared to us not having food to eat. I remember how boys thought they are entitled to girls. Uh, Friday afternoons as girls would go and play in the streets as, as, as a group. And just when you're there, the boys will come rushing in a group and everybody's trying to grab whoever they wanted all along. The elder women have, have, have gone through that, so they see nothing wrong with it. Nobody says, hey, you can't do that over, that's my child. In the villages, I think that's the, that's the way it is. It's men and boys believing that whenever they want something, they will get it because they're stronger than us. And they know that when they push you on the ground, even if there are like five of you girls working together, the other four will run away. For me, it's, it's a loss of identity in a way as well, much more than the innocence, because innocence to what? Innocence, yes, now when I, when I look at it as an adult, innocence to being a child and someone taking away your virginity at that age. To me it was like, I'm sure it's just a rite of passage. We all have to do it, because no one has ever said it shouldn't start at six. There was a withdrawal as well, where I would be playing with other kids and I didn't feel like I should be with them anymore because the guilt will come in to say you, you were punished and yes, you're not going to talk about it, but then sit still, alone, and just be punished again and again. Carrying the guilt that she must have done something to cause the rape, Pamphilia turned to religion. She became born again, praying for redemption and return to the way things used to be. There's this scripture that says, he who has a clean hand and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false, he will receive blessings from the Lord and the God of his salvation. That, I knew it from when I was little. I felt I had sinned and I needed to be forgiven. The only understanding I had about that particular moment of me saying I'm being born again was to cover up, to get rid of the, the dirty panties. Pamphilia was raped for a second time when she was 10. A man known to the family crept into her room one night and violated her. Again, the incident was not discussed. I was asleep and then I woke, when I had that heaviness and all that he was doing, I screamed out. And when I, as I screamed out, he stood up quickly, put on his short pants, and then we walked out. And my mother came out and she said, what was it? I said, this is what uncle so-and-so did. And she said, no, it must have been a bad dream. And then we never spoke about it. That was like the end of it. In a story similar to that of so many girl children in South Africa, Pamphilia Thlapa was raped as a child, and the incidents were never spoken about. She focused on her books at school and held out for a new life at the University of the Western Cape, away from the dark secrets of her childhood. So after everything that happened back home, you decided that you'd come here, and this is, this is the beginning of the rest of your life for you? Yes, I came here and I made it. When I got to UWC, there are a couple of things that I decided to do. I stopped being born again. Eh? The second thing was I'm going to study. And was it everything that you imagined it to be? How did it turn out? My first year at UWC was tough. Eh? Your first years, you all, I mean, you're walking around campus and guys are looking at you. And, you know, I was thinking, I, I just want to cover my body. I couldn't fit in. 
let me put it this way. Because I looked at the other girls. They were free. They were all so happy. And they didn't mind if I walked into their room and they're naked. But I was cautious. I was like, you can't come near me when I'm not dressed. You can't see me. And you were having dreams? Almost every second night, I would have this nightmares where I'm running, I'm being chased by the police, I'm being chased by the soldiers, I'm being chased by my own mother, and I'm jumping fences, and I'm... All these things that now were worrying me. You know, it was like I have a part of me that waited during the day to, to allow me to get on with this life. But come night, it was like, it's you and me, baby. So it was a difficult time. It was just um, a confirmation that much as I could physically run away from my village, I had taken that village with me. The sad thing was I couldn't tell people about it. I would not open that world to anyone because I didn't know how, where to start. And, and I, I, I'm, at the time, I wasn't even sure if the two were related. I had to keep my eyes on the prize, and the prize was getting my degree. I just started writing. I would write, I would just write, but not for a specific reason. I was just writing because I enjoyed writing. I didn't go for any help. I got sick, actually, instead. Despite holding things together for so long, Pamphilia's past was now catching up with her. She became uncharacteristically violent with her boyfriend. I actually wanted to kill him, I remember. I said to him, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you. And as I was doing that, I was having flashbacks of when I was little. The next thing I woke up at the Tigerbeck Hospital, he said to me, when I looked at you, it wasn't you, there was something inside of you that, and the anger was not about me. During my years at university with all those struggles, what I believe was happening was um, a little girl in me fighting to get some space. Everything came to the surface. It was like you have left, all that happened, now this has to come out and and it was coming out it was it came out big time i just managed to to cover it with my studies despite her struggles pamphilia did well at university and then jetted off to johannesburg landing a great job in its high-flying corporate world on the face of it she'd done what she'd set out to achieve widening the distance between her life now and her childhood in limpopo we were colleagues I was young, fresh from varsity, ready to take on the world. And uh, at that time, I was thinking about the, the car that I'm gonna drive because I was using taxis. I was thinking about the kind of house, the kind of suburb I wanna go live in. And she already had a car, she already had a place to live. And, and it was kind of like a gauge for me. But, but there was something about her that wasn't right. Nice me, beautiful, stunning me. But there was that part of me that, that still could not fit into all that. It, it, it felt as if even with all my accomplishments, I was still not a full person. I was still not a, I didn't know who I was. In Johannesburg, the cracks began to show. Pamphilia became ill and struggled with a relationship that eventually ended. Her friends and colleagues began to wonder what was going on. I was struggling to relate properly in the relationship. I would close myself up. She needed a place to stay, and I needed to accommodate her. And it didn't make uh, sense because at that time, she was not my friend. I was a colleague. And I thought she must have been very desperate for her to, even, to, to consider me as someone that could assist her. I wasn't um, confident enough to have another person in my life. I wasn't loved 
enough. Like I didn't love myself enough to allow another person to love me or even for me to love another person. It, it turned out um, um, she was in a really bad relationship. She was highly pregnant. And, and, and this man just kicked her out of, of the house that they lived together in. Now I had terrible headaches that I couldn't, I couldn't live with anymore. And me now not even coping with this work thing. Me just feeling, sure, I'm here, I'm earning a salary, but I'm not going anywhere because I'm sick all the time. I'm not happy, I'm stressed. Then I was called into the office to say, look, we're retrenching and you're going. And that's when I started, then I went to see a psychologist. Pamphilia admitted herself to the Rand Clinic where a psychiatrist now began to help her. She began reading the work of authors such as Zimbabwean Tsitsi Dangaremba, who for years had been writing about patriarchy and its effect on women. Pamphilia too began writing. Now, talking to the psychiatrist, I was talking about my relationship and why I wasn't happy and all these things that were happening. But it was the clinical psychologist that broke that key thing to say, let's go back to where you were born and how you were raised and you as a child. And that's when I spoke about my first rape. And she said, I see you, you keep a book. What are you doing with that book? I said, I'm writing. He said, don't you want to write me a letter? And that's when now I started writing. What I loved about it was, it was just flowing. It came, it was like sitting from a reservoir that I didn't know about. So I just kept going and going and going. I couldn't sleep. I had to take it out until I stopped and then it was big enough to be a book. You are one of the few women in this country who's written about the experience of the rural girl child, who's really told that story. For me, the leap of faith was me finally acknowledging that this is a part of me, this has been a part of me, this has been my life, I can't run away from it. And sharing it with others, all I'm saying is, look, I'm not looking for your pity, but I'm saying, if you have been through this, if any of you can find themselves in this story, just know that it doesn't have to define you. And you were sharing things in this book that you hadn't shared even with members of your family, with your closest friend. I mean, that's a big step to take. The risk for me was now saying to people, I am dirty. I have been dirty all my life. And now how people are going to start looking at me, knowing what they know about me now. I read her book and it was the most painful thing. What saddened me is how could we have been such good friends and for me to have not known what she's going through. Um, but I also realized that when you've gone through such trauma in your life, um, learning to actually hold people close and really trust them fully becomes difficult. A lot of stuff that Pamphilia shared on about her life came as a surprise after the book. She, she masked it very well. We all knew, knew her as this happy child, and to realize afterwards what she's gone through, it broke me as well. Author Pamphilia Tlapa wrote A Daughter's Legacy as a way of coming to terms with her past. But it was to spirit that she turned to truly integrate her world and have a real chance at the full, rich life that she'd always wanted. So what was happening for you at a deeper level, spiritually? I know that you've always been receptive, even when you were little. After I have put the manuscript out and I said, look, people cannot see me as the, that broken, shaky person. I need to firm up now. So I had found what we call the science of mind. It says you acknowledge your past as what it is. What happened to me in the past cannot be separated from the me that I am. The great I am, which is even in the Bible, when God said to the Israelites, Moses, tell the Israelites, I am your God. I am the great I am. And that's what science of mind teaches. 
you have to be conscious at all times. You cannot allow anything to come and speak through you or take over your existence without your permission. And now? Well, the journey continues. I meditate a lot. I write every night, actually. I write when I wake up. Upon rising, I'll do my prayers and then I will write. Coming back from work, I will write and I'll do my prayers and then I'll write again. The dreams, I control them now. Hmm. Before I go to bed, I decide what I want to dream about. And I decide what's going to enter my, my space. When she was writing her book, Pamphylia came to an important realization, one which allowed her to reclaim the last vestige of a lost identity. She reclaimed her name. I decided I don't want to use the name Kiriboni anymore. Because Kiriboni means I have seen so many things and with everything that has happened, if I keep this name, then it means I'm still confirming that in my future, I'm still gonna see many things, many bad things. I decided, okay, I'm going to write a letter to my mom. I actually said to her, she knew what has happened to me and she didn't do anything about it. And I've, I've decided not to carry this with me anymore. I think my mother felt that I blamed her. My mother felt that I didn't understand that she did the best that she could. She probably maybe has lived in this, through this, herself and other women. And they, maybe they realize no matter how much they scream, nobody's going to help them. And she wasn't going to focus on that. I remember she used to say to me, the best way you can get revenge for yourself is if you do well. And let your enemy see you doing well. And now you've got two beautiful boys in your life. What does it bring you to be their mom and to have brought boys into the world? Joy in abundance. They, my boys are like, oh, I look at them and I'm thinking, whoo, it completes me, but it expands me as well. Given what you've been through, what do you want for them? I want them to, to know themselves. I want them to respect my, themselves enough to know that you don't have to violate anyone to, to be men. You don't have to violate anyone to, to be important or to feel important. I came across this Japanese idiom where the Japanese says they believe that for something to be regarded as beautiful, it must have been broken before. Because when a vase is broken in the Japanese community, for them to fix it, they use gold. So for me, to have been this beautiful person that I believe I am today is because I have been broken. And in the fixing, I think I managed to pick up the gold and the gold be my accomplishments. I don't know what my life would have been like if I didn't experience all that.